Now that we have our business card completed, let's take a look at uh, adding a logo per se. So a logo is a symbol that identifies who you are as a company. So that's often a name, a symbol. And how do we produce that when we're not artists? So this is one way that we can do it. So first of all, we're going to take a look at our pasteboard here. We have a business card with text on our actual card, which you can see is on this white shape here. Uh, one thing that we'd also like to do is visualize what this will look like without all these guides. So there's one thing that we can do is if we hit uh, control uh, colon, you can turn on and off the guides so you can see what your card looks like without the guides. Uh, it's a toggle key because it does the same and opposite function. So again, uh, control colon will turn off the guides, control colon will turn them on. And if you're on a Mac, that's command colon. So right now we have this white business card, but what if I want to play around with a logo on this card? I can take this text here using my selection tool, which is my black arrow, and I'm just going to take my text here and you can see I am grabbing my text because when you hover your mouse over an object that's selected and you know it's selected because you get this blue bounding box with these anchor points that we can manipulate. If we hover inside the box, you can see that there's a mini bounding box attached to my mouse, which means I can click inside this shape and drag it off onto what we call the pasteboard. So consider your pasteboard like a desk on which you have a piece of paper and all the stuff you want to put on that piece of paper or glue on later is sitting off on your pasteboard ready to move back in. So now that I've emptied my space here, I'm going to create a logo out of a font. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to dafont.com and dafont.com has all these great things. So it uh, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com and it has all these great fonts that we can select and there are other font sites but what I like about this one is the ability to type in text so that you can see what your text looks like because certain characters look very different. You can see here how certain letters might respond differently to your to your your name or whatever text you've typed in. So it might not look quite the same. So if, if I clicked on this font right here and I wanted to see what it looked like with the characters of my letters, I would type in my name here in the custom preview and submit it. And not such a great font you can already see with my name here because, well, I've got this wicked gap. So if I decided to choose this font, I'd have to come up with a solution for this gap. So this isn't a great font, but this, again, why I like the font.com is because you can test that uh, along here. So I'm going to go to this thing up here called Themes. And we often recognize fonts as, well, what do we see here? We see fonts that we can read with particular text. But we have these things in the theme called dingbats. These are picture fonts. These are images that are assigned to each letter on the keyboard. So if I'm looking for a particular symbol that go I'm going to be able to identify with, um, I really like these butterflies, but these lions are very powerful. My last name is McLeod. I could find something here. Owls are considered wise and also associated with knowledge, uh, birth, growth, all sorts of great different kinds of symbols that we could choose. Now, I don't want to pick something too cartoony, and I also don't want to pick something that is already uh, trademarked or registered and copyright, so I have to be careful of like the aristocrats Aristocats, well, these guys belong to Disney, so you have to be careful about what you choose. So I'm going to come back up to the top here, and I'm going to look under this one called Shapes. And under Shapes, you can see there's all these great crests and things that I could select. 
There's also uh, banners that we can use to create a logo. This is a lot of fun as a symbol as well. Um, arrows, direction, all sorts of great fonts that we could choose, um, or picture fonts, I should say, that might identify with you and create symbolism for who you are. Um, so I'm going to go back up to animals, actually. And just to show you how this works. So this is something you'd want to investigate. Uh, let's see what nature has for us. So are you have strength like a mountain? Um, if you're doing a food logo and it's fresh foods, you could use a leaf and color it green. So there's ample, ample opportunity to find something that will work well for symbolism here. So gardening, here you go. These are great. Gardening and growth. So I'm going to go back to a tree also. Very good. Um, let's see. So I'm going to go back to animals. I'm going to choose this awesome lion font that I saw earlier here. Here's lions. Um, but what else is available with this font? Whenever you're investigating fonts into font.com, you should always click on the font itself to see what other characters there are because this is just a sample of the entire alphabet and what's available. So now you can see that assigned to the keyboard here are different characters of this keyboard. And there are some great fonts here, um, some great pictures. And I really like number nine. That's an excellent one. If I want to be roaring, if I want something very graphic, or do I want something more cartoony, more um, ancient. So what am I looking for here? I'm really liking number nine. So I would write that down because that's the character I need for that particular image. That's a great one. Let's see. And J. J looks pretty awesome as well. So I've got number nine and the letter J, which I'm attracted to, as well as the letter F. That's a pretty good one, too. So what I need to do is write this down. So my font is lions. And the symbols I need are capital F and number 9. And I think I'll stick with capital F and number 9 as my choices. So first, I need to download the font. Once the font is downloaded, you get a zip folder. So you need to double click that in order to reveal the files inside that font folder. And so here we go. And inside that font folder, uh, mine's showing up differently only because I'm on a Mac. Um, so if I double click in that folder, there is, um, so if I click on the zip folder, I'm going to open it. Oh, nope, still the only thing that's in there is the actual TTF file, which stands for, if you look over here, true type font, you might have one called open type font. So it would be an OTF here. So this is the one I want. So what I need to do is I need to install it. So I'm going to double click that file. And once I've double clicked it, this is the view for a Macintosh, which says install font at the bottom. On a PC, it'll stay, say install font at the top. So make sure you click install font. Once it's installed, and it might take a minute, you can close off the window. And there we go, it's installed. And you can close off the window. And once you go back to Illustrator, your font will actually be available. So if I type in the capital letter F, which was what I wanted, or the number 9 based on the font I liked, and I select those letters and hit Command Shift greater than, or sorry, Control Shift greater than, I'm going to make those bigger. And with the black arrow, the selection tool, move those into place. And now all we have to do is choose the font. Now, I don't have to go through this massive font list. Why would I do that when I know the name of the font? I can actually start typing it in. L-I-O, there we go. And there are the two symbols that I like. 
personally, and because they're fonts, I can highlight it like a font, which is great. So I can always change by typing in different characters on the keyboard, change my mind and choose a different symbol out of that font set. But I like that number nine. I think that's my favorite out of the grouping. And so now how do I work with this? It's a logo. It's, some, it's a symbol I'm going to use for my logo. But uh, control plus to move, to scroll in here. Uh, but it's still a font. So how do I work with that? I need to create outlines with this image. So you can create outlines with any kind of font. So we're going to turn it into line art filled with color that we can manipulate with our white arrow, which is our direct selection tool. So first of all, we need to select the text like an object with your selection tool, your black arrow. And under the type menu, we are going to create outlines. Now, it doesn't look like it did anything until I select my direct selection tool. And right now I don't have my, my edges turned on. And now I have to figure out where they are. Show edges. There we go. So if I, I hit the control H by accident, uh, only because I was uh, turning off the guides, but turning off the uh, show edges also turns off our bounding boxes. So there it is. So now when I select this, you can see my bounding box. So if you accidentally turn that off, control H to hide, you can find that under here hide edges, control H, or simply just hit control H. So now when I hit my white arrow, my selection tool, you can see all these crazy anchor points that make up the paths and the joins of that path with these anchor points. That allows me to click on any one of these anchor points if I hover. You can see my mouse changes as I hover over, this would be a path, that would be an anchor point, and it actually allows me to select that and manipulate the path as I please. So don't forget that control Z is your boo-boo button. Now what if I want to, I'm going to click on the black arrow, and what if I want to make changes and color this object? Well, it colors the whole thing. So how do I color certain aspects of this so that I can make this my own? So right now, this is acting like a font with holes in it, like the letter A or the letter O. And we call those compound paths. So I'm going to have to release that compound path. And so what do I mean by a compound path that's see-through? Well, if I put another box here, and I right-click on that and send it to the back, you can see it's actually see-through. When I release that compound path, so I'm going to click on it like a letter O or a letter A with that hole through the, the object. So I'm going to either, you can go under object to release the compound path at the bottom of the list here under object compound path release, or you can right click. First, we're going to ungroup the selection. So if you have multiple characters, it'll ungroup the characters, but keep each character in contact with its compound path. Or once we finish ungrouping it, we can release it. So watch what happens when we release the compound path. It's no longer holes. Now each one of these images is an individual shape that I can now fill with any color I like. But notice, it's no longer see-through. So you have to be, um, con you have to commit to the changes that you're going to make. So I'm going to keep that uh, yellow here. But I'm going to start changing to other colors that I like. I'm also going to get rid of this background box. So this allows me, and if you hover, you'll, your mouse will pick up some of those spots that we're missing here. So let's see, should I make that black? Let's see what happens. 
Is it too dense? It sure is. Maybe I'll just make that a two color lion. There we go. And control minus to zoom out. And that's looking pretty good. So now it's in bits and pieces though, because we both ungrouped it and released the compound path that made it think that it was a single path here, a single object. So we are going to use our black arrow, our selection tool, click and drag over to select it all. And we're gonna right click and we're gonna group that together. Now when I click away and I select part of the object, well now it's all completely grouped. So there we go. I now have a selection here. So how do I add that back into my card here? Well, let's put this back on. And you can see because we did the card first and we did the lion second, look where the lion's sitting. It's sitting on top of my information because it's going to go in order of how I created it. So I can right click on that object if I wanted to send it to the back and arrange and send it to the back. Now it's sitting in behind. So if I want to add this object here, and you can see now, well, how do I click through now that I've sent it to behind because now it's selecting the text box in the front. If you hold down your control key, you can click through the object and select the background image. There we go. All right, so what am I going to do with this? Uh, there are several things I can do with this card. I can change the orientation of the alignment here and do something like this. But now I have this thing in the way. So one thing that we have to do as designers is we have to decide how we're going to configure our card in order to make everything work. So here I have my symbol. Here I have my, my text. Let me see if I move this to the right. So what happens now is we're just going to play. We're just going to move objects around on our page. And you literally play with it until you get the way you want it to look. Now, here's one thing about this line. This line should be facing the other direction, don't you think? So we can do that in Illustrator. All we have to do is flip it because this line is looking the wrong way. The line should be looking at my text. So how do I do that? Well, there's a tool for everything in here. Kind of like the saying, there's an app for that. We've got a tool for that. So I'm going to select my object. And I have my selection tool. And if I right click, I can transform my selection. What can I do? I can reflect it. Reflecting is a, think of it as a reflect, as, an, as a mirror. And what do you get when you reflect in a mirror? You can see this vertical flip. You can see what the results are going to be here. And if I click preview, I can see what the results are going to be. And I hit OK. So now I have a nice lion sitting on my page here. I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move that to the right slightly. And control zero, control one, zoom in a little bit, control plus. And now I'm going to turn off my guides to see how that looks. So control colon. All right, so that's not bad. I've got a symbol started and I've got to start to a logo that, uh, or a symbol that I can use as my logo as I get further into creating a branding for myself. And that is how you use a picture font to create a logo by manipulating the picture font, outlining it, ungrouping it, releasing the compound path, and then changing the colors at um, your leisure, and then grouping it back together. So in order to do that all over again, just watch the video, start and stop the video as necessary so you can follow along. And there you go.